Sketching Parabolic Arcs. So in uh, animation, there's a lot of cases where we find uh, parabolic arcs. Uh, one of the obvious situations is when we have something flying through the air. The uh, path of action is a parabolic arc. We talked about that in a previous tutorial. Now, uh, another instance where we find a parabolic arc is when uh, we have an object that is uh, falling or rising and falling, then uh, the motion curve in the graph editor is uh, also a parabolic arc. And uh, in fact, if we have something that's flying through the air and we see the uh, path of action, say this ball flying through the air has a path of action that's a parabolic arc, and then the uh, motion curves in the graph editor, uh, the motion curve for the horizontal position would be a straight line, but the motion curve for the vertical uh, position is uh, again a parabolic arc. Now the parabolic arc of the path of action is not necessarily the same curvature as the parabolic arc in the motion curve. So they're both parabolic arcs, but they uh, may have different curvatures, just like uh, you can have a line that has a slope that's either steep or shallow. You can have uh, parabolic arcs that uh, either curve a lot or curve um, more gently. So now let's see how to uh, sketch a parabolic arc. Now uh, when you decide to make a parabolic arc, the first thing is you want to decide where the arc is going to start and where the arc is going to end. Next, you decide where the top of the arc will be. So this is the height of the um, arc. And uh, now I've just drawn a box around uh, these um, uh, two end, the uh, start and end points, and then the height. Well, I want to locate the apex and the apex is supposed to be halfway between the start and end points. Now uh, I can either just roughly uh, estimate this uh, middle position or I could be uh, more careful and draw these uh, diagonals and I know that the diagonals intersect at the center of the rectangle and so then I just draw a vertical uh, from this um, intersection and then I know that that's uh, halfway between the start and end points. And that's my apex. The uh, next thing, and almost the final thing, is I need to uh, put some points on either side of the apex. So let's look at um, the point that's uh, on the side of the apex uh, where the uh, arc is coming down. So we have the apex and then uh, the end point. We want the point that is uh, in between those two to be um, halfway horizontally and a quarter of the way down. So this quarter of the way down, this is the uh, fourth down at halftime rule that's discussed in another tutorial. But, um, but even if you're not familiar with that, just remember that from the apex to the bottom, uh, that point should be a quarter of the way down when it's um, uh, halfway in between from uh, uh, horizontally, it should be a quarter of the way down vertically. And of course it's the same for the point on the other side of the apex between the start and the apex. Well now we're basically done because all we have to do is uh, sketch uh, a smooth curve that connects those points. Uh, you want to make sure it's flat at the at the top. Uh, and there's your parabolic arc. And uh, you can compare with uh, examples of things flying through the air like uh, this uh, stream of uh, water. You can even check this uh, um, shadow is also a parabolic arc. Now uh, this uh, technique is even simpler uh, when you want to sketch a
parabolic arc in the graph editor, for example, for the this ball that's falling down, um, this first key uh, frame is at the top, the last key frame is at the bottom, uh, the key frame that's halfway in time between uh, those two is here, and that this is easy to find because the graph editor has a grid, and so this is uh, pretty easy to either estimate or just count out. Uh, now we want at this, uh, on this frame, we want the ball to be a fourth of the way down. Again, using the, the grid, it's pretty easy to, to see that this is uh, halfway down, and then uh, between the apex and halfway down is a fourth of the way down. So this is where we put that um, keyframe. And with that, we already uh, basically have a nice uh, parabolic arc. If we want to do a ball bounce, then we just duplicate this arc um, on each side, and, um, and that's the ball bounce. Now, uh, parabolic arcs in perspective are a little bit more complicated, but it's the same procedure. Uh, you have the starting point and ending point, and you pick the maximum height that you want uh, for the arc. Now, locating the middle is a little bit more complicated because we're working in perspective. So here we use the diagonals to locate the center and then draw a vertical from there. And then that's the position of the apex. Uh, use fourth down at half time again to locate, okay, this is a fourth of the way down. We can even use diagonals to um, help us locate that. And that's the uh, point from the start, uh, halfway between the start and the apex. It's uh, positioned there. And then on the other side, it's uh, the same thing. So that's uh, basically the same procedure we had before, only remembering that um, lines that are parallel here in perspective should be converging to a vanishing point. Uh, and now, then we just finish and we uh, sketch the arc. So this is not uh, a great arc since uh, PowerPoint doesn't have the best drawing tools in the world, but, uh, but anyway, it's uh, roughly a parabolic arc. And uh, if we have a half arc, it's exactly the same uh, procedure. So just locate the fourth down at half time point and uh, uh, once you have that, then sketch in the, the arc. Now, being able to uh, sketch arcs has uh, a lot of useful um, applications. One, one thing is, um, for example, we want to make sure that if we have a um, path of action that's a parabolic arc, that the um, apex is located in the center of the, uh, of the arc. So we can um, use some of these principles that we saw to locate the center and then uh, here um, I'm finding that uh, this is uh, this arc is roughly centered. Uh, here's a, another example from a simple pencil test. So we see the character runs up, jumps, and lands. So uh, we can check here's where the frame where the character um, jumps. Uh, this is the uh, the apex located here, and then the, the character lands. And then um, using a little perspective, we can uh, look to see, well, between the uh, starting and landing, um, where is the position of the um, center. And um, this uh, red bar is the location for the um, center. And so the apex should be um, located a little bit back from where the character actually um, uh, had the apex. So uh, in this uh, pencil test, it looks like the um, arc of that jump is a little bit skewed uh, forward. Uh, so the character um, reached the apex uh, closer to the foreground than, uh, than is correct, although it's, it's pretty close. So probably close enough. So in uh, summary, 
to uh, sketch a parabolic arc, you pick the uh, starting and ending points, uh, and you pick the height that you want the apex. Then the uh, position of the apex is between those two um, endpoints. To find the points on each side of the apex, you use the fourth down at half time rule. And then uh, sketching arcs in perspective, uh, you just have to remember that vertical lines are drawn as verticals. However, horizontal lines have to converge to a, uh, a vanishing point. And then uh, there's a lot of uh, useful things you can do once you can uh, sketch these arcs, for example, checking the position of the apex of a, of a jump. Uh, probably the best thing is to go back and uh, pause on some of those uh, slides and um, try sketching some of those arcs uh, for yourself. After you practice with uh, a couple of them and, and get the hang of it, um, it'll, be, it'll be second nature. Uh, kind of like uh, drawing ellipses uh, after you learn to draw ellipses. Uh, just takes a little practice to get them to get them right. So anyway, uh, we'll talk about other types of passive action in uh, upcoming uh, tutorials. So we'll uh, see you then.